So we're just talking about uh, tailing the tune, which is a course I have wanted to run for years. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I first heard a, a, a ballad song and I thought, I knew it in a different format. And I thought, why is somebody singing my Bubba songs? And then I realised not everything belongs to my Bubba. Um, <laughs> and actually it was an old English song that Bubba had kind of, klezmerized and used to sing around the place um and we got talking didn't we yeah. about the stories uh attached to ballads they're really interesting and not always what they seem and there's there's female highwaymen there's murder there's infanticide there's comedy there's there's the gamut of all human life in these uh in these uh ballads and at a time when many storytellers are fishing in the same pool for their material uh we started talking I thought wouldn't it be interesting to start looking at these songs and about the more magical hidden aspects what's hidden in plain sight and use them as inspiration to create your own stories and uh and then we started talking because the drash is perfect for actually unpeeling, to midrash just means to unpeel, to, to find what is hidden in plain sight. So, um, so Tale in the Tune is pretty much about plying the drash. So if you've done any drash work with me, it doesn't matter if you haven't, because we, we teach it all uh, from the ground up. Um, sort of the idea of taking a, a ballad a, a, and, and finding the 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 inspiration the hidden story that's there in plain sight and using that as a basis to create a story that you could then put into your repertoire and you said something to me it's quite interesting about Polly Vaughan didn't you because the song about Polly Vaughan I used to wander around singing all the time you know is like he shoots his lover because he mistakes her for a swan because she's got her apron thrown over her head because it's raining and I used to think well he couldn't have known her that well or he couldn't have been a particularly good hunter if he mistakes a woman in an apron for a swan and you said something quite interesting well there is a theory there are lots of theories the thing about ballads is that they are very mysterious a lot of the time the things that happen in them don't always seem to make sense with the inevitable result that there has been endless scholarly speculation about what's really going on and what hints of of this, that, and the other what's are in the really balance. What's really going on? Hmm. Um, and who who knows what's really going on? But what we found is that those little hints in in ballads are wonderful raw material for drash exercises in shown Lee's family tradition you know if the purpose of the drash is to uh, make it clear what's happening under the surface a lot of the time in stories and, and for you as the storyteller to discover your own truth in them and ballads are great for that and the thing with Polly Vaughan particularly one of the theories that would do the that, would, that, that has done the round who knows if it's true or not is that actually what's happening in Polly Vaughan is that she, she just she's not looking like a swan because she's throwing her apron over her head to keep the rain off she is a swan she's a shapeshifter um, which puts a whole different spin on it and well we know means... that you know we know that there is shape-shifting beliefs at various yeah. different time, time and time when she comes back to plead for his life she's saying don't you know let he he should go innocent he 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 didn't realize you know it's, it's on me that I'm, i was a swan you know? yeah oh, what was it like <laughs> But that's just one example. There are lots of others as well, and mm. I've we've had conversations about like that the night visit. She moved through the fair. You know, she moved through the fair is another one. The other one that I love is um, it's sometimes called Jeff Collins or Clark Colville or whatever the name is. The name the name quite often changes from version to version because goes Chinese whispers down through the tradition. But uh, Clark Colville is is about a man who seems to be driven to a sticky end by the vengeful ghosts of 
women that he has abused in the past. We, you know, we th they think that's what's happening in the ballad, but they're not entirely sure. And I spent ages and ages and ages going over the details of one particular version and, and just dry, drashed it and drashed it and drashed it. And it is uh, rather like, as you would with the story, you have a great opportunity just to open up the story and try and work out what's going on. Because one thing is that's clear about ballads is that they, they are riddle-like. They, a lot of what is happening in them is going on under the surface and they don't spell out entirely always what it is that they they mean probably because it didn't need to be spelled out to the original audience maybe or perhaps the the mystery and riddling aspects of it were part of the appeal um who knows you know there's so many questions and so many possible answers mm -hmm. and that makes them very very good raw material for Drash exercise, good chance to exercise your your midrash muscles, and to come up with a story that is possibly not being told by anyone else mm. at this particular moment in time. And uh, so, if you're thinking about coming on the course, it actually starts next week. Um, uh, you could go onto the child child ballad uh, site. Um, it's all uploaded onto the internet find yourself a ballad um and uh, bring it along and we can pull um, out a few examples of things that you might want to look yes at. i can uh get simon to post some stuff on my page over the next sort of 24 mm -hmm. hours and the links um yeah. <laughs> but yeah we'd love to see you i love teaching the drash i've just finished strolling by the wild woods uh, and the five weeks go so quickly and like we finished last night and everyone was like, but we want to know so more. It's all been so tantalizing. So we're also doing word dancing. So if you've done any courses with me and you can't make this one because it is on Tuesday nights, I normally teach the Zoom courses on a Monday night, but this one is on a Tuesday. Um, uh, do do come along uh, to word dancing, which is a summer school. So we're running online this year. Uh, normally it's in person, but I'm I many of you that know me know I have been waiting for a huge operation on my hip and pelvis and looks like that's going ahead. And I will probably be in recovery um, when we would normally be teaching it. So it's much easier to stay here and teach. But the, the prospect of doing five days online sounds a bit hairy, but. To be honest with you, if you the way I teach anyone that's used to me teaching is I will give dress exercises and I'll say, go away for an hour and play with this and then come back and then we put you in breakout rooms and then you go and have a, a walk and a ponder on things. And so it's it's you're not going to be glued to the screen for a long period of time. But, yeah, I think um, I'm very excited. This is the second time we've run Tail in the Tune. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It's great. I mean, it's a, it's a underexplored. Yeah. I don't of... know anyone else that's actually running something along those lines. There are courses in ballads and there many other courses things in like that. There are lots of courses in ballads. But, and, uh, there's some yeah. people look at the ballads of stories, but I think this is your, this is a chance to really take dash. the midrash. Yeah. And apply it to the to the folk ballad and really see what's hidden in plain sight i mean i was uh, doing a project with nancy kerr um um a few years ago and we were saying you know that that a ballad is really just a story with music and a a story is just really a ballad without music there's i mean that's a very simplistic definition and the folklorist to my right would you know, not agree totally, but um, there are nothing. similarities. <laughs> you didn't need to, mate. Your face said it all. But, you know, there are definitely similarities. And I think, yeah, it's a rich and unexplored vein. So if you would like to explore it with us, with me, with mm -hmm. you, uh, next week. Well, it begins next week. It's Tuesday nights, about an hour and a half, two hours on a Tuesday night for five weeks. Um, uh, we would love to see you.